Hello, Westford. This week, we update you on the latest developments on the pending asphalt plant. We'll tell you about a rift over historic house markers and also fill you in on the latest school committee meeting. I'm Ira Kelts, and it's time for Westford Cat News. Town officials held a public forum Wednesday, October 12th, to discuss the settlement they reached with the owner of Newport Materials of Nashua over an asphalt plant. Newport owner Richard DeFelice wants to build a plant on about three acres of a 115-acre parcel on Groton Road. He settled a six-year court battle on September 27th with members of the planning board and board of selectmen. Town officials announced the outcome on October 4th, sparking anger throughout the community. Citizens who are out there, who are members of this community, who want to be in here and who want to listen. What is going on? Why would you pick this room? It is too small. Okay, I hang on. Hold on, okay? First of all, we have a process here. I defined it at the beginning. This meeting will go a lot more smoothly if you follow it. You need to be recognized. Be room, Hold on. Right. We don't interrupt here. Hold on. You need to be recognized before you speak. And with this many people here, if people decide they can just start shouting out whenever they want, it's just not going to go well. So let's try and follow the process. The Stony Brook School Auditorium filled to capacity and spilled over into the lobby. The unexpected number of attendees forced public safety officials to refuse access to more than 60 people due to the safety concerns. The law enforcers estimated that at least 450 showed up to air their opinions. After consulting briefly with Police Chief Thomas McEnany, Selectman Chairman Kelly Ross announced town officials would reschedule and the crowd slowly dispersed. Stay tuned for the announcement of when and where the public hearing will be held. Westford Cat will be the first to bring you the news. A quirky rivalry has two groups competing over which house marker to use for historical homes in town, prompting one selectman to ask for clarification. So, uh, I'm really not an expert on this at all, but I'm kind of a little confused on what is going on um, <laughs> or what is being asked. So, <laughs> The Historical Commission and the Westford Remembers Committee are in the midst of a rift over which historical house markers to use in town. Historical Commission member Robin Connell told selectmen on September 27th that she'd like to see a basic white marker with black letters used. Prefer just to they keep the white. You would just like the white. Right. And to have, we, it's confusing yeah. to residents. We need to come through one website to get the house markers. And that's the historicals. So we're asking them to direct the residents to our website. You know, one single, one stop shopping for house signs. But David Christiana of the Westford Remembers Committee addressed selectmen at the same meeting seeking their approval for the brown markers he designed and has been using as a fundraising item for about two and a half years. So what's your proposal? <laughs> I honestly I'd like to keep I'd like the program that the Historical Society has to stay with the Historical which is, Society. Which is what? <laughs> which is this sign here. Yeah. And the same white sign that they have and give the people an option. So you can see the entire exchange at westfordcat.org. Hello, I'm Patty Stocker with an update on the latest school committee meeting from October 11th. Superintendent Bill Olson made mention of the dangerous staph bacteria that infected four Westford Academy students during the first week of October. He said custodians had disinfected all surfaces at the high school over the Columbus Day weekend. You know, it, it's, it is spread mostly by skin-to-skin uh, -skin contact. Uh, we don't know if, if it was born by a student um, within Westford Academy or whether it was an athlete from another community. That's entirely possible. Uh, if you recall, we had a, a situation along with many other school systems in the state of a um, incidence of Mercer about five years ago. And we followed the same procedures that we are right now, and that was eradicated uh, very quickly. I mean, all infections. And, Bacterial infections of that nature have to be taken seriously, as we, as we all agree. But 
uh, and talking with our school nurses also, uh, what they've consistently told me is that the likelihood of it spreading and a widespread infection is, is very small. No word yet on how the infected students are doing. In other school news, school committee members voted unanimously to use surplus money in the teacher's salary account to fund an English language learner teacher as the district struggles to meet the needs of a growing number of students who often come from non-English speaking homes. We generally have wound up at the end of, end of the year with some surplus in the teacher's salary account and we anticipate that this is a normal year that will create that, that also and this is a need that um, not only is required to be addressed by the DESC but it, um, you may be aware that the DESC uh, sent down these mandates a couple of years ago to school systems because it was being taken to court by the Department of Justice and so we really have no choice. To watch the school committee meeting in its entirety, go to westfordcatnews.org. For Westford Cat, I'm Patty Stalker. It looks like we're going to have some nice fall weather coming our way. Here's Giuseppe with the details. Hello, in Westford. This is Giuseppe with the weather forecast for this weekend the week of October 15th. It looks like another beautiful fall week in New England. Here's what's coming up. On Saturday, it will be sunny with a high of 58 and low of 34. On Sunday, it will be mainly sunny and clear again. The high will be 65 degrees and low will be around 44 degrees. On Monday, we will see intervals of clouds and sun with possible rain showers in the evening. The high will be 67 degrees and low 46 degrees. On Tuesday, it will be sunny with a few clouds and showers moving in layer in the day. The high will be 69 and low around 55. On Wednesday, there will be rain showers in the morning with clearing in the afternoon. The high will be 63 degrees and low will be 47 degrees. On Thursday, it will be mainly sunny and clear with a high of 60 and low of 43. On Friday, it will be another sunny day with just a few clouds. The high will be 61 degrees and low will be around 43 degrees. That is your wish for weather. Have a great week, everyone. Patty Stalker introduces us to Danny Zuko, an adorable 10-month-old black cat. Available now at the Lowell Humane Society. The Lowell Humane Society on Broadway Street in Lowell has many pets available now for adoption. I stopped in recently, where marketing and fundraising manager Crystal Arnott introduced me to an approximately 9 to 10 month old stray named Danny Zuko. Such a curious little fellow. So this is Danny Zuko. He is about 9 months, 10 months old. He came in to us as a stray, so he was running around on the streets. Um, you know, we usually recommend when someone finds a cat outside, if they're a pretty friendly and confident cat that, you know, first you check with all your neighbors and maybe hang up some posters asking if he belongs to them. Um, and we also recommend doing a collar method, which you put a little paper collar around their neck that says, am I yours with your phone number and um, wait to see if you get a call. And then if nobody calls in, then you certainly bring him into the shelter. But there are a lot of families that have indoor outdoor cats and we'd hate to see them whisked away from home unnecessarily. Uh, so we always wanna make sure that they're not just someone's cat before taking in a stray cat. We also have the paper collars here if anybody ever needs to borrow one, um, you know, or make one to put on a stray cat before bringing them into us. Um, but Danny was not, we didn't find his owners. Um, he is a really handsome boy. As you can see, he's got double paws. He's polydactyl, so he has thumbs on his front feet. And he has some pretty big back feet too. Um, we have a lot of cats that come in in this age, age range, you know, seven months to 15 months, um, where they're not quite kittens anymore in people's eyes, uh, but they are still very much kittens in personality. Um, so we like to encourage people, you know, if you're looking for a kitten, maybe give these guys a chance who are a little bit older because they're just as snuggly and playful as kittens, um, but you know, they're only a few months older. 
If you'd like more information on Danny Zuko or any of the other pets available for adoption, or would like to find out how to donate, volunteer, foster a pet, or fill their wish list, you can visit them at 951 Broadway Street in Lowell. Call 978-452-7781 or visit their website at lowellhumanesociety.org. For Westford Cat, I'm Patty Stalker. And here's Rekha Sharma with this week's health tip on the benefits of green tea in your diet. Hello everyone, I'm Rekha Sharma, back with a new health tip for Westford Cat News. Today I'm going to talk about green tea. Green tea is loaded with antioxidants, nutrients that have powerful effects on the body. This includes improved brain function, fat loss, and lower risk of cancer and many more benefits. Green tea has been shown to boost the metabolic rate and increase belly fat burning and also reduces the blood sugar levels. Green tea helps to maintain healthy cholesterol and also helps to maintain oral and dental health. For stomach upset during weather change, prefer mint green tea. Add one to two cups of green tea in your diet to get the benefits. I'll be back with a new health tip. Bye for now. What's going on around town? Here's Sarah Fletcher with details. Hi, this is Sarah Fletcher, Marketing Outreach Manager at Westford Community Television, here with a few upcoming events. The Cameron Senior Center has two upcoming programs, one on Friday, October 21st from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. The Westford Health Department is sponsoring an emergency preparedness fair for seniors. The event will cover fire extinguishers and generator use, as well as other safety tips. A number of vendors will also be on hand. And then on October 29th from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., it's the annual Harvest Fair, sponsored by the Friends of Cameron. Think about holiday shopping as there will be craft items, jewelry, baked goods, plants, gift basket raffles, and so much more. Witches Woods at the Neshoba Valley Ski Area is going on through Halloween night, October 31st. The Screech Park is open each Thursday through Sunday, 6.30 to 10.30 p.m. and admission is $37 per person. There is an adult coloring party taking place at the J.V. Fletcher Library on Thursday, October 20th at 7 p.m. And in fact, the adult coloring parties are now held once a month. Coloring pages and coloring pencils will be provided. Light refreshments will also be served. And it's okay to just drop in. If you would like your event to be featured in our weekly newscast, email news at westfordcat.org. And don't forget to post your events on our bulletin board, which shows daily on our Comcast and Verizon channels. Go to westfordcat.org, services, bulletin board requests. For Westford Cat, this is Sarah Fletcher. And that's a wrap for this week, Westford. We want to remind all registered voters that special town meeting takes place on Monday, October 17th at 7.30 p.m. at the Abbott School on 25 Depot Street. The town will need a quorum of 200 voters to begin. You can find a preview of the warrant articles online at westfordcatnews.org. We leave you this week with shots of the portraits and sketches of Donna Berger, this month's featured artist at the Parish Center for the Arts. Have a great week, everybody.